بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد اللهم اغفر لشيخنا اللهم اغفر لنا ولشيخنا ومشايخه والمسلمين أجمعين قال المؤلف رحمه الله تعالى باب ما جاء في الكهان ونحوهم the chapter 26 what is said about fortune tellers and their like in, in, in his sahih Muslim records from some of the wives of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم who said whoever comes to a psychic to ask about something believing in what he says his salah is not accepted from him for 40 days Abu Huraira reports that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said whoever comes to a fortune teller believing in what he says then he has disbelieved in what has revealed in what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recorded by Abu Dawood and from the four as well as Al-Hakim he who said it is sahih according to the conditions and whoever comes to a psychic or a, or a fortune teller Believing what he says, then he has disbelieved in what has been revealed to Muhammad. Abu Ya'la reports something similar as said of uh, as, as a saying of Ibn Mas'ud with a good chain. And from Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu anhu, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said he is not one of us who interprets an omen or has interpreted for him, nor he who tells a fortune or has one told for him, or who performs magic or has it done for him. And whoever goes to a, goes to a fortune teller or believes in, or be, believing in what he says, then he has disbelieved in what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's very good. طيب إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شر أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد. The Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, Babu Maja'a fi al Kuhani wa Nahwihim. In this chapter, the Sheikh will talk about Rahmatullah alayhi, the ruling on a person going to the soothsayer or the fortune teller, or reading those things <coughs> where <coughs> the individual claims to know the future of this person or that which uh, the future holds for a certain individual. So that is the topic of this chapter. Maqsood al-Bab, Maqsood al-Bab, Bayanu ma jaa fi haqqi, Bayanu ma jaa fi haqqi, Muddai, Muddai, Ma'rifati al-Ghaib, Muddai, معرفة معرفة الغيب من الوعيد الشديد بيان ما جاء في حق مدعي معرفة الغيب من الوعيد الشديد. <coughs> so the objective of this chapter, the maqsood behind it, is to clarify the ruling on the one that claims to know the unseen the one that claims to know the unseen and the one that goes to him and the one that goes to him so min al wa'id al shadid wa man yadhhabu ilayhim liyas'alahum so this chapter talks about <coughs> those individuals who people go to <coughs> Those who claim to know the unseen And also those who go to them And those who go to them Munasabatul Bab The connection with this chapter To those before it Is that this chapter talks about the Kahana The fortune tellers, the soothsayers Those that claim to know the future And the last chapter talked about what? Sihr, the sorcerers, magicians So they have something in common And they have things that they differ in They can, they have in common two things Number one They both claim to know the unseen Secondly يَشْتَرِكَانِ فِي اسْتِخْدَامِ الشَّيَاطِينِ وَالْاِسْتِعَانَةِ بِهِمْ 
يشتركان في في استخدام الشياطين والاستعانة بهم. So both of them claim to know the unseen. Hence, they will do a magic spell for a person, or they will claim, or they will tell the person that has come to them to do X, Y, Z because this is going to happen. Secondly, they share in common the fact that they use the shayateen to help them, and they use the service of the shayateen. And the shayateen will not help them unless they first disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> and the third thing that they share in common is أَنَّهُمَا كَافِرَانِ خَارِجَانِ عَنِ الْمِلَّةِ They are both kuffar and they have disbelieved in the sharia of Allah, in the religion of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Lakin what do they differ in? What do they differ in? They differ in the fact that Al-Kahinu Al-Kahinu Yukhbiru Anil Mustaqbal Wala Yatasarraf وَسَاحِرُ يَتَصَرَّفُ So they differ in the fact that the, the, the fortune teller, the kahin, will only tell the person this is going to happen or this won't happen and so on. They will only tell them something that they claim will happen or will not happen in the future. They have no say in or they won't go out of their way to do anything for this person in most cases. However, <coughs> however, the magician takes part in trying to help this individual. So they'll do knots for them and tell them to place it somewhere. Or they'll harm a person for the sake of another individual. Matthew, and someone comes to them and says, do sihr on this individual for me. The magician goes out of his way and he does that magic on that person. So that is what they, what they differ over or what they differ in. Another word that we're going to come across is So what was, who is the kahin? يُخْبِرْ عَمَّا سَيَأْتِي He informs us about that which will happen لكن the araf which we're going to see araf يُخْبِرْ عَنِ الْغَائِبِ فِي الْمَاضِي يُخْبِرْ عَنِ الْغَائِبِ فِي الْمَاضِي أي الأشياء الضائعة بمقدمات The Araf is someone who He doesn't tell you what will happen in general But like, he tells you that which has happened For example, someone loses an item Or loses something And they come to the Araf And he tells them your item is over there Or they want to know what has happened to a certain individual And so they go to him and he tells them that Fulan or this individual killed him or he fell off this or this happened to him. Lacking in general, <coughs> as we shall see, the Araf and the Kahin, they are like the two words that we came across, Al Islam wal Iman. What was the Qa'ida? <laughs> if Kahin and Araf are mentioned in the same sentence or in the same hadith, then each takes a different meaning, what we've just explained, what, what I've just explained. Lacking if they are mentioned, or if one of them is mentioned without the other, then they are interchangeable. طيب. أنا قاعدة, أو يتبع قاعدة دان, كل من ادعى, كل من ادعى معرفة علم الغيب, كل من ادعى معرفة علم الغيب فهو كاهن مشرك شركا أكبر كل من ادعى معرفة علم الغيب 
فهو كاهن مشرك شركا اكبر طيب then the sheikh rahimahullah mentions the first hadith the sheikh rahimahullah he mentions the first hadith he says ruwiya aw rawa muslim fi sahihi an ba'di azwaj an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam an ba'di azwaj an-nabi in some narrations it clarifies it is hafsa in some narrations it clarifies that it is hafsa that the messenger uh, that, that, that narrated the hadith an an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam annahu qala that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said man ata Arrafan, whoever goes to a Araf, a fortune teller, a person who's a soothsayer who claims to know the future, whoever goes to him, Fasa'alahu, and he asks him an shay'in, an shay'in, Fasa'alahu an shay'in, mutlaq, sah? Ay shay'in, tayyib. Fasaddaqahu, and he believes in him, or he believes him, لم تقبل له صلاة أربعين يوما لم تقبل له صلاة أربعين يوما. so this hadith mentions that whoever goes to a araf and he asks him about something it could be anything it could be anything فصدقه and he believes him لم تقبل له صلاة أربعين يوما. then his salah is not accepted for forty days. then his salah is not accepted for forty days. طيب كلمة فصدقه هنا underline that because this is not in the narration of Imam Muslim. it is in the narration. and just underline it. it is in the narration of Imam Ahmed رحمه الله. it is in the narration of Imam Ahmed rahimahullah. So the hadith is Man atta araf and fasalahu an shay. Whoever goes to araf and asks him something, Lam tuqballahu salatun, no salah will be accepted from him for 40 days. For 40 days. Then in the next hadith, Wa anna bi khayra radiallahu anhu anna nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, Man atta kahinan, whoever goes to a kahin. Tayyip. Do you notice and Man atta kahin and whoever goes to a fortune teller, a soothsayer, فصدقه and he believes him بما يقول in that which he says فقد كفر بما أنزل على محمد he has disbelieved in that which has been revealed to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. What have you noticed? The first hadith said the word what araf. Second, kahin. So we understand them together. The araf. Same meaning as Kahin because they mentioned only one of them is mentioned, and in the second hadith, Kahin is only mentioned, so it includes what? Naam, the Araf. And then believes in him in that which he says. Verily, he has disbelieved in that which has been revealed to Prophet Muhammad. These two hadiths. Contain the see the, the 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 case or the situation of the person or the hal of the person that goes to a soothsayer, and the one that goes to a soothsayer is one of three types. Is one of three types. The first is an yatiyahum. أو أن يذهب إليه ثم يسأله أن يذهب إليه ثم يسأله من باب الفضول والاستطلاع من باب الفضول والاستطلاع So that first scenario is a person goes to this individual who claims to know the unseen, claims to know the future, and he asks him, he asks him, like in Babil Fudul, just for the sake of asking. He doesn't believe him, and he knows he doesn't know the unseen, like just for the sake of asking him, 
Oh, min istidla, just wanting to see what it's all about, what all the fuss is about. He goes there and he asks him. That individual, the first hadith applies to him. Lam salatun yawma. His salah will not be accepted for 40 days. His salah will not be accepted for 40 days. طيب. What does it mean his salah won't be accepted? Imam al nawawi rahimahullah, he says, أي لا ثواب له فيها. Imam al nawawi says, أي لا ثواب له فيها. وإن كانت مجزئة بالسقوط الفقد عنه. وإن كانت هي مجزئة بالسقوط الفقد عنه. So Imam Nawawi says, رحمه الله, the meaning behind his salah won't be accepted for 40 days is that there will be no reward for him praying these 40 days. So number one, you write, there will be no reward. Number two, he has to pray. Number one, there's no reward for him for 40 days. Number two, he has to pray. And the reason why they mention the second point is because so that people don't say, Taib, if my salah is not going to be accepted and there's no reward, what's the point of me praying? So secondly, it will be, it's still wajib on him, compulsory upon him. Thirdly, by him praying, the obligation is remo- lifted from him. By him praying, the obligation is lifted from him. What does this mean? It means that he does not need to repeat it again. He does not need to repeat it again. So with that hadith, or in that first scenario, what do we say? With regards to the salah, there's three points that we just I just mentioned. What are they? La thawaba, there's no reward for him. It's still wajib upon him, so he can't say khalas, what's the point of me praying then? Lakin, thirdly, the obligation is still is lifted from him. So he doesn't have to make up the 40 prayers after those 40 days. Or he doesn't have to make up the missing the, the prayers that he prayed in those 40 days. Is that understood? So that is for the person that what? Goes to him, just asks for the sake of asking. Asks for the sake of asking. The second one is, أَنْ يَذْهَبَ إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ يَسْأَلُهُ ثُمَّ يُصَدِّقُهُ So the first, he, what has he done? He's gone to him, asked him, and believed in him. And believed in him. طيب, for that one, this, the hadith where the Prophet said, فَقَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ applies to him. So he has disbelieved in that which Allah Jalla wa ala has revealed upon him. He has disbelieved in what Allah has revealed upon the Prophet wasallam. Why? Because Allah Jalla wa Ala says, "Qul la yalamu man fi al-samawati wal-ardi al-ghayb illa Allah." Qul la yalamu man fi al-samawati wal-ardi al-ghayb illa illa Allah. Say to them, O Muhammad, that none knows the unseen, none in the heavens and the earth knows the unseen except for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And by you going to this person and believing in him, you've believed that he knows the unseen. And the last scenario is that a person goes to him. Asks him like in he's testing him to expose him. He's testing him to expose him. And that is permissible and comes under Al Amr bin Ma'uf when he and Munkar enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. And the evidence for that is the Prophet. The, the, the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ went to a Jew that was called Ibn Sayyad They claimed that he knew the, 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 the ilm al-ghayb 
So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "I have kept in a word, meaning I thinking I'm thinking of a word. Since you know the unseen, then say it." And then the uh, the individual said, "Adukh, duh, and he couldn't pass it there. Whereas the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was thinking of the word adukhan, and he said, "La ta'du qadrak, ikhsa falan ta'du qadrak." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam condemned him and refuted him and refuted him, condemned his action and exposed him. So that is the scenarios when it comes to a person asking the kahin. Then the next hadith, the, the Shaykh says, Rahimahullah, walil arba'ati wal hakimi. Walil arba'ati wal hakimi. Wa qala sahihun ala shangdihima. Taib, walil arba'ati, this doesn't apply to this specific hadith. Uh, the Sheikh must have been referring to the hadith that has just been read The one before it, Abu Dawood So this hadith, the third hadith Man ata arafan aw kahinan fasaddaqahu Bima yaqulu faqad kafara bima unzila ala muhammadin It has the same meaning as what? Huh? Same meaning as the previous hadith. The same meaning as the previous hadith. So anyone that goes to the kahin for these three scenarios, it is one of these three scenarios. Then the next hadith. وعن عمران بن حسين مرفوعا ليس منا من تطير أو تطير له لا. There's something before it which is. ولأبي يعلى بسند جيد عن ابن مسعود مثله مرفوعا طيب ولأبي يعلى أبي يعلى he's got a مسند one of the imams of the past he's got a مس بسند عفوا بسند جيد with a good chain of narration عن ابن مسعود narrated from ابن مسعود مثله يعني the same as من أتى عرافا أو كاهنا فصدقه فقد كفر بما جاء عن محمد صلى الله بما أنزل على محمد so where it says موقوفا موقوفا means what Stops at the companion. Lakin at the end, right? Walahu hukmu rafi. Walahu hukmu rafi. Why? Because it is impossible for a companion to tell us about al Islam al kufr, meaning this person disbelieves or this person has disbelieved or fallen into shirk, to label something kufr or shirk except that they heard it from the Prophet. And what proves it is the other hadith that, just, that we've just read. <laughs> then the next hadith, Imran ibn Hussein, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, oh, uh, "Magfuran, yani, leisa minna, he is not from us, man tatayyara aw tutayyara lahu, the one who seeks omen, who believes in omens, bad omens, or he seeks for it to be read for him or interpreted for him." Tatayyuk is going to come today, inshallah. It's the third chapter that we're going to read today, inshallah. Aw takahana aw tukun tukuhina lahu. And he's not from us, the one who practices fortune telling. Oh, sorry. Or the one that it is told for. The one that practices it. Takahana, he practices fortune telling. He says, I know this and so on. Or the one that it is done for. So he goes to a person and tells me, tell me about, about the mustaqbal. About that which is to occur. So that is... Uh, أو أو له, or he does sihr or magic He himself does magic Or sihr is performed on his behalf So he has مثلا, a dispute with someone And he asks a magician to perform sihr on this individual Or his wife does not love him anymore And he goes to the magician and says Do sihr on her for her to love me Or the opposite And that is called what? الصرف والعدف We studied it where? Nawaqid al-Islam Nawaqid al-Islam Sarf al-Ad Sarf al-Ad So sometimes a man His wife Or he'll, the partner of another person Or the partner is a bit of a tricky word now, You've got to specify Husband or wife So the husband Has methylen He has no interest in his wife And his wife goes to a magician And says Make him fall in love with me again That is type of sihir so that is the meaning behind أو سحر له ومن أتى كاهنا فصدقه بما يقول فقد كفر بما أنزل على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the last part of the hadith is the same as what we've already studied which is the one that believes in 
the one that goes to a fortune teller and asks him that which has been done for him or that which is in the future, then he has disbelieved in what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with, which is the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Which is the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Type the word laysa minna, laysa minna. He is not from us. Shows that it is a major sin, or those things that are mentioned in this hadith are major sins. And the fact that something is a major sin doesn't mean it is not kufr. Doesn't mean that it is not kufr. Also, the fact that tatayyur or seeking, seeing, believing in bad omens, as we shall see today, is not kufr or is not shirk, shirk al akbar. It doesn't take a person out of Islam. Like in fortune telling, it does. Sihr also takes a person out of Islam. Going to a fortune teller takes a person out of Islam. One may ask, why are these ahad, why are these things mentioned in one hadith if they differ in their ruling? Like, and that is not something surprising because we've already come across a hadith which is similar to it. Who can remember? A hadith where a few things are mentioned and they take different rulings. Naam, ijtani bu sab'al mubiqat. Jazakum Allah khair. The first was what? Shirk. Second, sihr. Both of these are shirk, sah? Those things that come after them, after these two things, are they kufung? Do they take a person outside of the fold of Islam? No. Therefore, the fact that they're mentioned in one hadith doesn't mean that they um, don't have the same, or that they take the same warning. Taib. قال البغوي رحمه الله تعالى رحمة واسعة إمام البغوي said رحمه الله نعم إمام البغوي said رحمه الله العراف الذي يدعي معرفة الأمور الأمور بالمقدمات يستدل بها على المسروق ومكان الضالة ونحو ذلك Imam al-Baqawi rahimahullah Imam from one of the Salaf He has a tafsir Ma'alim al-Tanzeel it was called uh, Sharh al-Sunnah as well And he's got a lot of good or beneficial books He's an Imam of the Sunnah He explains what an Araf is and what a Kahin is He says al-Araf al-Ladhi yadda'i The Araf is the one that claims to know Things With signs, foreseen signs That he can tell things that have happened For example Things that have been stolen or things that have been lost. That is the Araf. Taib. Waqila al al Kahin. And it is said that he is the Kahin. It is said that he is also a Kahin. Wal Kahinu, he says, who will let the Yuhbiru an al Murayabati fil Mustakbil. Fil Mustakbil. He says, Wal Kahin, the Kahin, the fortune teller is, a let the Yuhbiru an al Murayabat. He is the one that informs about those things that shall take place. Fil Mustakbil. In the in the future وَقِيلَ لَذِي يُخْبِرُ عَمَّا فِي الضَّمِيرِ And he's also said he is the one that informs about what the person has in his heart What he's thinking and so on So forth طيب. وَقَالَ أَبُوْ الْعَبَّاسِ لَكِنْ شَيْخِ الْإِسْلَامِ مِنْ تَيْمِيهِ He says رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ أَبُوْ الْعَبَّاسِ is who? شَيْخِ الْإِسْلَامِ مِنْ تَيْمِيهِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى رَحْمَةً وَاسِعَةً He says العراف, the araf, uh, the, the Araf is a name ismun lil kahini. Araf is used to describe and it is a name for the kahin, the fortune teller. Wal munajim, and the one who uses astrology, astrology to tell that which is to happen in the future. And inshallah, there's going to be a, tenji, a chapter to, to do with tanjim. Wal ramal, wa nahwihim. What is the ramal? We studied it last week, in the last chapter. Naam, he draws lines on the floor claiming to know that which is going to happen by simply by these lines that he's drawn. For example, if two lines come out, then this is going to happen. Islam rahimahullah is saying that the kahin, the word kahin, it includes. The what? The kahin, uh, the, the munajim, sorry, the one that claims to know astrology. The ramal, 
and ونحوهم, and the like of them the Araf, everyone that claims to know the unseen everyone that claims to know the unseen then he is a kahin then he is a kahin and just apply that to the qa'idah earlier on that we learned what? learned? If they're mentioned together, then they take different means. If they're mentioned, or if one of them are mentioned, then it includes the other one as well. So the meaning of kahin comes under these things. Then he mentions the last narration by Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. He says, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, يَنظرون في النجوم ما أرى من فعل ذلك له عند الله من خلاق طيب أباجاد أو أبجد هوز is the Arabic alphabet there's a and it's used for different things and it is of two types it is of two types there's a type which is permissible and there's a type which is not permissible There's a type which is permissible And there's a type which is not permissible So using these alphabets Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha, Jim and so on Abjad, Hawaz or Alif, Ba, Dal, Jim and so on If a person is using it For example to learn Maths مثلاً. Because in the past they used to use it to learn maths Whereby every letter stands for a number If a person is using it for that Or is using it to number the points that he's mentioning مثلا, You'll find in some of the books Instead of one, two, three You'll find what? Alif, Ba, Jim, Dal, Abjad, Hawaz and so on طيب. Or if a person is using it to find out the date Then that is permissible That type is permissible Lakin if a person is using Abjad Hawaz or these numbers or these letters To claim to know the unseen And that which is going to happen in the future By saying this number at this number equals this therefore you're going to have X amount of children Or you're not going to have children Or you're going to have a car crash in the next two days Things like that Then that is haram Then that is haram And Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu Is referring to that type And Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu Is referring to that type Also what comes under these is going to people who claim to know the unseen For example sometimes or the future Sometimes you will see people giving out cards in the streets Spiritual healer they call them Spiritual healer And the outside stations giving cards out Or they say we can read what, what they call the horoscopes So anyone that goes to these people one of these signs applies to him One of these scenarios If they go there just to ask for the sake of it Then their salah won't be accepted for 40 days And if they go there To try and to believe in them Or wanting to know the future Then they have disbelieved in what has been revealed upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Also what comes under that is reading zodiac signs Where you find on newspapers And so on And it's very common sah? Al-Abaraj they're called It's very common so we should stay away from these things and stay away from reading them Even just for the sake of reading them We should avoid reading them It's haram to read them And we should also tell other Muslims Because a lot of times you will hear Muslims saying What are you? What star sign are you? Sah? So the, what, what, like, method are you cancer? Are you Leo? Are you this? Or so on like, and We should teach the Muslims and advise them against it And warn them against it طيب. So a summary of this chapter is Anyone that claims to know the unseen has contradicted the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because what is a given fact in the sharia is only is that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the ilm al ghaib طيب فيه مسائل important points 
Number one, believing a fortune teller and faith in the Quran will not coexist in someone. No. Two things that are the opposites, they won't exist. The Prophet وسلم, said, فَقَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى وسلم. He has disbelieved in that which has been revealed upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. طيب. Number two, the clarification that this is kufr. No. فَقَدْ كَفَرَ He has disbelieved. Number three, the mention of the one who has his fortune told. No. For example, the one that, uh, where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned that he is free from him. لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ تُكُهِنَا لَهُ he is not from us. So not only is it a major sign, like it is kufr, because this person, by you going, or I will hear the billah, by a person going to a fortune teller to tell him that which is to occur, they're asking him why. In most cases, because they believe that they know that which will happen. So they have given him a something from the khasais of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the knowledge of Allah jalla wa ala is exclusive to him. Or ilm al is exclusive to Allah. <coughs> Number four, the mention of the one who has an omen red. And we're going to see that in today's chapter, inshallah. Number like five, the Prophet said he's not from us, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Number five, the mention of the one who has some spell performed for him. Naam. So we studied last week that magic and the one that is pleased with magic, it both disbelieve. Not only the magician, like in the one that goes to the magician and says, "Do sihr for me," he has disbelieved. Limada, why has he disbelieved? Li bil kufr. And he is pleased with kufr. Number six, the one, the mention of the one who learns numerology. Naam. And that is impermissible if it is if the person is claiming to know the answer <coughs> and tell the future. Number seven, the mention of the difference between the fortune teller, Kahin, and the psychic, Arraf. Naam. What is the difference between the Kahin, the fortune teller, and the psychic? The Kahin. Six, seven minutes ago we studied it. Okay. Okay. Like now they're men mentioned together. The kain is the mustaqbil and the haraf is the mali. The what? Nah. The 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 kain claims to know the future. He will tell you this will happen for you. Like in the araf, people go to him to ask him about something that was lost in the past. For example, I've lost. I don't know. My car has been stolen. They would go to araf. They would go to araf. And I believe it was this had the last chapter where every hay had one of them. Every hay, every tribe had a magician, had a araf, a kahin that they would go to for these superstitious things. Chapter 27. What is said about Nushrah from Jabir, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about Nushrah. He said it is from the works of Shaytan, recorded by Ahmed with a good chain as well as Abu Dawood. And he said, I asked Ahmed about it and he said Ibn Mas'ud disliked, <coughs> disliked all of it. And with Al-Bukhari from Qatada, I said to Ibn, Mus- Ibn Musayyib, if a man is... Musayyib. Oh, no. oh, no. It is said that he used to dislike... Uh, Ibn Musayyib was one of the tabi'in, no. one of the great tabi'in. He used to dislike Musayyib. <laughs> I said to Ibn Musayyib, if a man is under a spell or he is cold sexually to his wife, can he undo this or use nushra? He said there is no harm in it. They are only intending some good by it. There is no prohibition for what is for what there is benefit in. It is reported from Al Hassan that he said, No one can undo magic except the magician. Ibn al Qayyim said pay, nush- pay attention to the statement of Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, and you can understand the whole chapter. Ibn al Qayyim said Nushra is to undo a magic spell. There are two types. The first is undoing the magic with what is similar to it. And this is the work of Shaitan, which the saying of Al Hassan refers to. So the one who's the one seeking the Nashir and the one performing it to go to the Shaitan, giving him what he wants in exchange for what will remove the spell. The second is Nushra through Ruqya, Ta'awudat, medicine, and permissible supplication. This is allowed. This chapter, the Shaykh Rahimahullah will talk about curing magic. Curing magic. And the reason he mentions this chapter is because in the previous chapters he talked about magic and he talks to, talked about some types of magic, sah? So now, he's telling us the ruling on curing yourself with magic. 
is telling us the ruling of curing yourself with magic. Maqsood al bab Maqsood al bab Bayanu hukmi nushra. Bayani Bayanu hukmi nushra. Clarifying and understanding and learning the meaning and the hukum and the ruling of nushra. The second point, and nushra, in according to the shara, it means halu sihri. Afwan. Before that, linguistically, it means al izala. Linguistically, al kashf wal izala wa raf. Linguistically, in the Arabic language, it means al kashf wal izala wa raf. And all of these words are on the meaning of, around the meaning of lifting and removing. Lifting and removing. And often you will find in when you're studying the books of Ahl Ilm, you will find that they say the meaning of this word Lughatan wa wastilahan. Lughatan wa stilahan. Linguistically what it means this and according to the terminology of the scholars, it means this. And you will often find there's a close connection between the two. And that the terminology of the scholars it is more specific than the wa, than the linguistical meaning of a word. So that is the meaning of a nushra. Like in istilahan, it means hallu sihri min al mashuri. Hallu al-sihr min al-mashuri bi-sihrin aw bil-isti'anati bil-shayatin bil-sihrin aw bil-isti'anati bil-shayatin Taib so pay attention. The meaning of this of is halu sihri is removing sihr from the one that it has been performed on using sihr or with the aid and help and service of the shayateen. So when nushra is mentioned in the sharia, that is the meaning of it. However, it can also mean halu sihr an al-mashuq, just removing sihr, as we shall see in the chapter, as we shall see in the chapter. And the connection of this chapter with Kitabu Tawheed is the fact that Removing Sihr with Sihr, removing magic with magic, negates one's Tawheed. Removing magic with magic removes one's Tawheed. Then the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala Rahmatun Wasi'a <coughs> He starts with the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the first hadith is the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked about an nushra, an nushra. Fakala, and he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Hiya min amali shaytan, hiya min amali shaytan." It is the deed and the actions of the shaytan. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about an nushra An nushra is al-ma'hud, an nushra al-ma'hud The nushra that is known, that was known in jahiliya Which is what? Removing sihr with sihr So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about that So an nushra here, alif wa na, an nushra al-ma'hud The one that is known 
That is common knowledge. What is nushra? He said, here min amal shaytan. It is from the action of shaytan. What is the wajhu dalala? Ja'al al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ja'al al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An-nushra tal-ma'hudata min amal shaytan. Ja'al al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An-nushra al-ma'hudata min amal shaytan. Haythu asnada ilayhi. النشرة حيث أسند إليه النشرة وهذا دليل على التحريم أو وهذا دليل على تحريمها دوجه الدلالة how does this hadith show that النشرة is haram the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in talking about the نشرة that was known that was commonly practiced which is what Removing sihr with sihr, removing magic with magic, he said it is from the actions of the shaitan. So the Prophet ﷺ attributed nushra to the shaitan, and the fact that it was attributed to the shaitan, it shows that it is halal or haram. It shows that it is haram. It shows that it is haram. So that is with regards to the first dalil. Then the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, Rawahu Ahmed bi Sanad al Jaid wa Abu Dawud, wa qala. سئل أحمد عن عنها فقال ابن مسعود يكره هذا كله. So Imam Ahmed رحمه الله was asked. Imam Ahmed was asked about a nushra. He was asked about a nushra, and he said ابن مسعود يكره هذا كله. ابن مسعود ابن مسعود يكره. He dislikes all of them. What does Imam Ahmed mean? What does he mean by yakrahu? Karahu tahmi. And he sees it as haram. In the terminology of the Salaf, al karaha yakrahu hada means what? Yahrum. They used to see it as haram. And that has evidence in the Quran of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Who can remember the verse? Kullu. Thalika kana sayyu inda rabbika makruha. Allah described what as makruh. Qatl, nafs, shirk, and so on. Allah Jalla wa Ala described them as makruh. Lakin, it doesn't mean that it is makruh, disliked, meaning if you do it, you won't be sinning. La, it's haram. Lakin, that came across, we came across a narration similar to that. Where? Who can remember? No one revised, huh? <coughs> Chapter number nine, seven, eight, nine, eight or nine. At Tama'im. Ibn Mas'ud kana yakrah thalik, sah? Taib. Ibn Mas'ud kana yakrah thalik, taib. Naam. So Imam Ahmed rahimahullah mentions that Imam Mas'ud radiallahu anhu he used to dislike that taib. And the fact that Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu mentioned that it was haram shows that it takes that, shows that it is not permissible to do. Taib. So nushra is of two types, or rather, halu sihri removing sihr is of two types. That's in about five minutes, huh? Give it five minutes. Removing sihr is of two types. A type that is permissible al mashru or nawun mashru un, wa nawun ghayr mashru. A type that is legislated and permissible. And a type that is not permissible. As for the second one, which is not permissible, then it is halu sihir bi sihir, removing sihir with sihir. That type is not permissible. That type is not permissible because sihir is haram itself, right? So how can it be used to remove sihir itself? That is number one. And that is the one that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said here in amal shaitan. It is the actions of the deeds of shaitan. The second type is removing sihr with du'a, ruqya, removing sihr, removing magic with du'a and ruqya. And that is permissible. 
curing ones or removing sihr with dua or ruqya reading Quran on a person drinking zamzam water <coughs> that is legislated and it's permissible to do then the next narration that the imam says rahimahullah he mentions wa fil bukhari an qatada qultu li ibn musayyib rajulun bihi dibbun dibbun this word a man that has a magic spell on him lakin dib means what tabib comes from dib cured so this word is from adad they use dib to refer to someone who is well Seeking insha'Allah that Allah Jalla wa Ala will cure him. So Rajulun bihi dib, that's what they mean. Ay Rajulun bihi sihr. Rajulun bihi sihr. So they said to Ibn Musaib radiallahu anhu rahimahullah, a person that has sihr on him, a magic spell has been uh, done to on him or performed on him. Or, or you khadu or you are khadu ala or you are khadu ala an imra'ati or you akhadu an imra'atihi ay yumna'u min al-wusul ilayha yumna'u min al-wusul ilayha you akhadu you akhadu yani he's prevented from having intercourse with her or he's prevented from going near his wife so they said to him ay yuhallu anhu aw yunashshar ay yuhallu anhu is it to be removed from him is it to be removed from him so he said qala la ba'sa bihi there is no harm in it إنما يريدون به الإصلاح إنما يريدون به الإصلاح فعلي only they want they only want rectification and to make things better فأما ما ينفع فلم ينهى عنه فأما as for that which benefits فلم ينهى عنه then it has not been prohibited it has not been prohibited طيب so he, note that he says there's no harm in it Removing sihr. The question was, is it permissible to remove sihr from him? And he says, there's no harm in it. Like, in how do we understand these words of Ibn Musayyib rahimahullah? We understand it that he is saying, or we understand it to mean that he is saying it is permissible to remove sihr using legislated means. It is permissible to remove sihr using legislated means. Why? Because it is impossible that an Imam, a Tabi'i, one of the greatest tabi'een, such as Sa'id ibn Musayyib, saying that sihr is permissible, knowing that it is haram, and knowing that it takes a person out of Islam, knowing that it takes a person out of Islam. Lakin he is saying that ruqya shari'iya is permissible, and dua is permissible for this individual. And also we can say, فَأَمَّا مَا يَنْفَعُ Because as for that which benefits, فَلَمْ يُنْهَا عَنْهُ We haven't been prohib prohibited from it. أما ما ينفع طيب سحر هل ينفع سحر does it benefit لا it doesn't benefit so that indicates that, that indicates that he means رحمه الله the سحر or removing سحر with legislated means دعاء reading Quran drinking zamzam water and having the intention that Allah جل وعلا remove it from you and also that is in line with the حسن الظن that we should have for the imams as we shall see in the narration of Hassan al Basri, al Hassan al Basri, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Rahmatan Wasi'a, after we pray. Wallahu Ta'ala, A'lam wa Ahkam. Tay, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa Salatu wa Salamu ala Rasulillah. So the last, um, the last narration we took was the narration of Sa'id al Musayyib, and he said that it is permissible to cure oneself in that which, because he only wants, or the ones that are curing themselves only one islah and to rectify their situation and he said whatever benefits then we haven't been prohibited from it we haven't been prohibited from it and obviously we understand that to be the permissible type of nushra the permissible type of removing sihr uh, naam then al-hasan radiallahu anhu wa rahimahullah al-hasan al-basri he says la yuhallu as-sihra la yuhallu as-sihra illa sahirun Uh, طيب لا يحل السحر إلا ساحر <coughs> in this narration al Hassan al basri رحمه الله he says that only the magician removes sihr 
only the magician removes sihr. So in it, there's the maqsud is the musihr, the sihr. He is uh, saying that it is not permissible. Obviously, if he's saying only the sahir removes sihr, then what he's referring to is the sihr that is used to remove another type of sihr. So Imam Hassan al basri rahimahullah, is saying that that type of sihr, only the magician does it. Why? Because if it was a person of taqwa, the one removing the sihr, if it was a person of taqwa, a person that fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would use the Qur'an of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure the person. They would read Qur'an upon the person. They wouldn't perform sihr. And the statement of Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, it clarifies what Al-Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, mentioned. He says, Sa'id al- uh, Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, he says, An-Nushratu hallu sihr anil mas'hur. So he says, Nushra is what? Removing sihr from the one that it has been done on. We're here no'an, and it is of two types. We're here no'an, it is of two types. Ahaduhuma, the first is halun bi sihr mithlihi. Removing sihr with sihr, the like of it. Removing sihr with the like of it. Wahuwa ladhi min amali min amali shaitan. Min amali shaitan. And that is the type that is from the act, from the actions and the deeds of shaitan. Meaning what? It is permissible or not permissible? It is not permissible. وَعَلَيْهِ يُحْمَلُ قَوْلُ الْحَسَنِ And on that, you understand the, the understa- you understand the so we understand the statement of Al-Hasan Al-Basri that he meant that type. The type of what? Removing sihr with sihr. That which is the action of shaitan. So it is impermissible. فَيَقْتَرِبُ So what happens? فَيَقْتَرِبُ فَيَقْتَرِبُ النَّاشِرُ وَالْمُنْتَشِرُ إِلَى الشَّيْطَانِ بِمَا يُحِبُّ so the nashir is a sahir. Well, muntashir is the one that it is being done for. The sihir is being removed from. So they both, what do they do? The one that is doing the sihir and the one that is being removed from, yaqtaribuna ila shaytan bima yuhib. They get closer to shaytan with that which he loves. Who? Shaytan. And what, what does shaytan love? Al kufr wa shirk with disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the shaitan will ask this individual to slaughter for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to leave off worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to throw the kitab of Allah, the Mus'haf Allah wa Jalla wa ala on the floor, akamakumullah. So the shaitan will only cause you to do something or ask you to do something that angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that which angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleases shaitan. And that which pleases shaitan, it angers Allah Jalla wa ala. Then he says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, Rahmatan wasi'a, فَيَبْطُلُ عَمَلُهُ عَنِ الْمَسْحُورُ أو فَيُبْطِلُ عَمَلَهُ يعني the sahir, he nullifies and he undoes the sihir that he has done to the person that, or he undoes the sihir from the person that he has been done on. So that is from the actions of shaitan. وَالثَّانِي ثاني و النوع الثاني the second type النشرة برقية say having نشرة برقية performing or removing magic with رقية reading the Quran of Allah سبحانه وتعالى upon the person with the conditions that we already studied وتعودات and seeking refuge in Allah سبحانه وتعالى عدم كل تام وكل شدان وهام وكل نعين لامة these du'as that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم taught us والأدوية and other du'as or other medicines that are permissible والدعوات المباحة and du'as that are مباح du'as that are مباح what does he mean du'as that haven't been mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah لكن they mean or they are dua that you're getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove the sihr from you. Fahada ja'izun. He says, Rahimahullah, Fahada ja'izun. Then that is permissible. Then that is permissible. So Ibn Qayyim, Rahimahullah, he summarized the chapter and he said, A nushra is of how many types? Two types. What are they? That which is permissible and that which is not permissible. Sah? Type. That which is not permissible is removing sihr with sihr. Why? Because although you want to get rid of sihr, lakin, you cannot disbelieve in Allah Jalla wa ala to get rid of sihr. Lakin, the second type is what? Naam. Removing sihr with those things that are legislated. Taib. The next masala is how can you stay away from sihr? First and foremost, read the du'as that, Allah Jalla wa ala, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us. The morning and afternoon du'as. The morning and afternoon du'as. 
and all of the adhkar that Allah Jalla wa that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us, the morning and afternoon du'as, and all of the individual du'as, for example, when you're going into your home, leaving your home, and so on. طيب. Also, making du'a to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala that He protects you from it. And also, staying away from things that are going to cause the evil eye, or cause jealousy in other people. For example, sometimes you will find people putting their pictures or the pictures of their children or their home on social media or on their WhatsApp profiles. Those sorts of things a person should avoid because although it is a ni'mah, like not everyone that sees it will say, Allah Mubarak or MashaAllah. There are those, and if you put your children up, there are those that can't have children. If you put your fancy cars up, there are those that cannot afford it. And they are not going to say, MashaAllah or Allah Mubarak, like they fall into hasad wal billah. The last point is, a person can say that, why is it not permissible to remove sihr with sihr in case of darurah? Who can answer that? Allah Jalla wa Ala says, إِلَّا مَنْ أُخْرِهَ وَقَلْبُهُ مُطْمَئِنُ بِالْإِيمَانِ So we can utter a word of kufr in dire necessity, sah? Out of need. Is it permissible for a person to say, I am going to remove sihr with sihr out of necessity? Why not? It's an action, okay. There are excellent, there are alternatives. Tawakkul is not there, sah. Huh? The threat is not immediate. That is immediate. The person's actually got magic on him now. Sah, it puts them into kufr, but they're saying it is a darur, it is a need. They're saying they're doing it out of ikrah, they've been forced to do it. They're going to get closer from the actions of shaitan. Type. All of the things that you brothers have mentioned are the right answers. There are alternatives. Type. Also, one of the other answers to that is Sheikh Saleh al Sheikh Rahimullah mentions, which is that a darura is to what? Preserve life. Sah? You're doing it to preserve life. And in Islam, we learn that there are khamsa darurat, five darurat, which are what? Hifdu ad deen, wal aql, wal mal, wal ard, wa and nafs was one of them. Sah? The second one. Taib. Huh? Nafs. Preserving these five. So by doing sihr, which is a darura for you, claiming that it's a darura, type. That is a darura because your health is at stake, your nafs, your life is at stake. Lacking what's on this, what's to lose or what's at stake is a lot greater, which is your deen, which is your deen. And the darurat al khamsa, the five things that Islam came to prevent, uh, uh, preserve, the highest one is what? A deen. So if you lose your religion, then you can't obviously. Uh, yani that is, it's worse to lose your health than to lose your religion. Secondly, when you go to a magician who guarantees that you'll be cured from it, the maslaha, is it mutahakkiqa? Mahuma, yani you may get better, you may not get better. You may get better and you may not get better. Secondly, or thirdly, the magician, how can you trust him? He may cure you from that magic and put another magic in you, the mashayikh say, the ulama say. He might put another magic on you to get you to come back every time, sah? So it is not permissible, even in dire situations, to cure sihr with sihr. And also, as you brothers mentioned, there's alternatives. Ruqya. There's alternatives. Taib. Fih misail. Not you can apply that guy. The, yani, the means do not justify them. The, 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 the goal doesn't justify the means, meaning just because you need to be cured, you can use anything to cure yourself. Sah. Feed me side. Important points. Number one, the prohibition of nushra. Which type of nushra? If we say it's of two types, sihir bi sihir, using sihir to cure sihir. Number two, the, the distinction between what is prohibited of it and that which removes harm that an exception has been made for. Now, 
so basically the two types the difference between the two types that type which is permissible and that type which is not permissible باب ما جاء في التطير what is said about omens وقال تعالى ألا إنما طائرهم عند الله ولكن أكثر أكثرهم ولكن أكثرهم لا يعلمون نعم ولكن أكثرهم لا يعلمون ولكن أكثرهم لا يعلمون وقوله قالوا طائركم معكم الله سبحانه وتعالى said rather the evil beliefs based on their omens are about Allah but most of them do not know and they the messenger said your omens are for you Abu Hurair رضي الله عنه said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said there is no عدوة أنه طيرة أنه حمة أنه صفر recorded by البخاري and مسلم and adds أنه نو أنه غول go to the third, second hadith not the one that is after that the one that okay. Abu okay. and from Abu Dawood with a sahih chain from عقبة ibn Amir who said طيرة was mentioned to Allah's messenger he said the best of it is فأل he does not harm, it does not harm a Muslim. So when one of you sees what he dislikes, then let him say, Oh Allah, no one brings good but you. None defends from evil but you. There is no might or power but except by you. Ibn Mas'ud reported that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tiyarah is shirk, Tiyarah is shirk. It will not be among us, but it will not be among us, but Allah would remove it through tawakkul. This chapter, the Sheikh Rahimahullah, Babu Maja'a Fitaytayyur. The Sheikh Rahimahullah in this chapter is going to be talking about those things that, or the belief of having bad omens in something. The belief of having bad omens in something. Maqsood al Bab, the Maqsood of the Bab, Bayanu Hukmi Tatayyur. وأنه من الشرك. The first is the first or the مقصود the objective of the باب is to clarify the meaning and the ruling of تطيو seeking bad omens in something or believing in bad omens in something. وأنه من الشرك and the fact that it is from شرك. The second point is atatayyur, ma'na atatayyur, or the ta'rif of tatayyur. It is atasha'um, atasha'um, atasha'um bi masmu'in, aw mar'iyin, aw ma'lumin, aw zamanin, أو مكان أو زمان أو مكان. so it means to have a bad omen of something, to have a bad omen of something بمسموع something that is heard or something that is seen or something that is known or a specific time or a specific place. نعم أتشاؤم بمسموع أو مرئي أو معلوم أو مكان أو زمان and it means that a person has bad omens means has a bad feeling or he's superstitious of something that he has heard of or something that he sees or something that he knows of. So for example, in Jahiliyyah, in Jahiliyyah, before the time of the Prophet Sallallahu and before the sending of the Risala of our, upon our Prophet Sallallahu they had false beliefs, whereby if they wanted to go on a journey, مثلاً, they would let go of a bird, or they would look at the bird and look at what way it would go. If it would go to the right, then that would mean that is a good luck. That is a sign of good luck. So you can go on your journey or embark on your tijara, whatever it is that you're buying or selling your business, or you can carry on with marrying a certain person because the bird went to the right. Or 
If it goes to the left, they will say subhanAllah, oh, that was not subhanAllah. Like, and they will say that is a sign that it is a bad luck. That is a sign that I should stay away from something. Or something that they would hear, for example, they would be, or they would want to travel and they would hear someone saying, there was an accident on the, مثلاً, on the motorway. There was an accident on the motorway and they would think, since there was an accident, I need to stay away from it. And it holds him back or holds her back from traveling. Or something that was known. So for example, from the what they used to do in Jahiliyyah, on the last Wednesday of every month, they would see it as a bad luck. They would see it as a bad luck. Or what is common nowadays, for example, the number 13, they see it as a what? As bad luck. And if it happens to take, if it takes place on a Friday, then that is worse. They say what, Friday the? The 13th. Or they say if you break a mirror in a house, then that is a sign of what? Bad luck for seven years or some nonsense like that. Or if you see... If you open an umbrella in a house, or if you walk between two, 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 under a ladder or something like that. Or if you see a black cat, what happens? You get bad luck for seven years or something like that. Or if you step on a what? So they say that due to these things, they have a bad omen. So something bad will happen. And then that causes a person to stay back from it. It causes a person to stay back from it. The, the third point is hukmu What is the ruling of a Asghar, minor shirk in its asal. The default ruling for it is shirk al asghar. Li'annahu ja'ala ma laysa bi sababin sababa. Li'annahu ja'ala ma laysa bi sababin sababa. Li'annahu ja'ala ma laysa bi sababin sababa. So the default ruling is that it is what? Minor shirk. Why? Because he has made something a means that Allah Jalla wa ala and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not make a means. Remember when we were talking about tamaim, amulets and so on, we studied this qaida. So anyone that makes something, a reason for something else to happen, and there is no evidence for that, then that is shik al asghar Lakin, if a person believes, wa yakunu shik al-akbara, idha taqada annaha tastaqillu fi jalbi al-khayri wa daf'i al-shar. Wa yakunu shik al-akbara, ويكون تطير الشرك الأكبر إذا اعتقد أنه يستقل أو أنها أو أن التطير يستقل بجلب الخير ودفع الشر لكن it becomes major shirk if a person if a person believes that things happen or don't happen because of this bad omen that he believes in. Mathalan, for example, he breaks the wind the, the mirror in the house, and then two hours later his car gets stolen because I knew it. I knew it was coming. And it happened because of the mirror. So he specifically says that it is the reason for it. Like if he believes that. It is only a sabab lakin that Allah Jalla wa Ala is the one that causes things to happen, then that is minor shirk. Taib. What is the dabid for it? What is the dabid for it? The dabid the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the last hadith. Man raddathu atayyaratu atayyaratu an hajatihi faqad ashraka. The dabid, a dabid, what is the criterion for it? How can you differentiate it from when it is not bad omens? Or you haven't taken it as bad omens? Is man raddathu atayyaratu an hajatihi. If that bad omen that you see, if it takes you back, if it takes you back to your home or you refrain from doing what you was about to do, then that has given you or you have fallen into a tayyara. Mathana, for example, you come across a car crash on the motorway. You carry on, carry on, and then you come across another car crash. 
half an hour later, later. After the second one, you think today's a bad day, let me go back. It's a bad day on the road. <laughs> and then you go back. That ha- you have seek- sought bad omens in that, and you said that is a sign of what's to come for me, so let me go back. That is not permissible. طيب. Then the Shaykh mentions two verses. أَلَا إِنَّمَا طَائِرُهُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And the second verse. طيب. So these verses... <coughs> <coughs> so Banu Israel or the maqsood of it is that Allah Jalla wa'ala is saying Allah inama ta'iruhum inda Allah wa lakin aktharuhum la ya'lamun verily their beliefs the beliefs that they have in Musa it is only caused by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not by Musa alayhi salam so in order to understand this if you look at the verse before it fa'idha ja'athumul hasanatu qalu lana hadhihi if a good Benefit comes to them. Something, benef- something beneficial or good comes to them. Rain and they go through years of uh, prosperity and so on and so forth. They say, Lana hadihi. Lana hadihi. Yani we're deserving of these good things that are coming to us. We are worth it. Worth it. Naam. Lana hadihi. Wa in tusibhum sayyatun yattayyaru bi Musa wa man ma'a. Lakin if a harm comes to them or a drought or some sort of hardship comes to them, they will, they will say, it is because of Musa. It is because of Musa, before Musa and his risa, this stuff that he's telling us about, we were living a good life. Again, it is because of Musa and all of this stuff that he's saying, he has angered the gods, therefore it is from him. Then Allah Jalla wa'ala says, أَلَا إِنَّمَا طَائِرُهُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ يعني ما يصيبه من القحط والمصائب ليس من موسى ولكنه من الله سبحانه وتعالى فهو, مقد... فهو قدره Meaning that any hardship that comes to them and difficulty, then it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, Musa alayhi salam is a reason for goodness and barakah. Is a reason for goodness and barakah. Allah jalla wa ala says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَى آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْ لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ if only they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people of the village or the town, if only they believed in Allah jalla wa'ala and they feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah jalla wa'ala would have given them blessings from the, from the heavens. Then Allah jalla wa'ala would have given them blessings from the heavens. طيب. Then the next verse is similar to it. The next verse is similar to it in the Mahalu Shahid, which is قَالُوا طَائِرُهُمْ ضَائِرُكُمْ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنْ ذُكِرْتُمْ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ مُسْرِفُونَ So this was with regards to the, it's mentioned in Surah Yasin, the people of the, the, the Qariya, who every time a Prophet would come to them, they would say that, يعني, in times of Jahiliyyah, they would say that it is because of you. It is because of you. It is because of you. So the Mahalu Shahid from this verse and the verse before it, دَلَّتِ الْآيَةُ The verse uh, in Surah Al-A'raf, the first one. دَلَّتِ الْآيَةُ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ التَّطَيُّرَ مِنْ عَمَلِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَمِنْ عَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ دَلَّتِ الْآيَةُ أَنَّ التَّطَيُّرَ مِنْ عَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَمِنْ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ وَذَمَّهُمُ اللَّهُ بِذَلِكَ وَذَمَّهُمُ اللَّهُ بِذَلِكَ وَمَا ذُمَّ فَاعِلُهُ فَهُوَ مُحَرَّمٌ وَمَا ذُمَّ فَاعِلُهُ فَهُوَ مُحَرَّمٌ Allah Jalla wa'ala mentions in this verse that seeking bad omens is from the actions of the people of the book. The people of Musa and the Mushrikeen. And Allah Jalla wa'ala rebuked them for that and made them blameworthy. And if a person is blameworthy then it shows that that, sin, that is a sin that they have committed. And the same wajhu dalala for this other verse. The same wajhu dalala or point of evidence for this second verse. وَهَذَا دَلِيلٌ عَلَىٰ تَحْرِيمِ التَّطَيُّرِ And that is a dalil or evidence that tatayyur is impermissible. Tatayyur is impermissible. طيب, someone may come around and say, طيب, but that's from the people of the book in the past. What's it got to do with us? The Prophet ﷺ said, قبلكم. The Prophet ﷺ told us that this Ummah will follow the Ummah that the nations that preceded them in every single way. And from those ways is a tatayyuk to seek bad omens in, uh, in, in, in things. <coughs> then the Prophet ﷺ said in the next hadith, 
لا عدوى ولا طيقة ولا هامة ولا سفر طيب لا عدوى لا عدوى أي لا مرض يعدو بنفسه meaning there is no illness that goes to the next person or that affects the next person on its own أي لا ينتقل بنفسه إنما ينتقل بأمر الله it doesn't go to another person just like that لكن it goes because of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah jalla wa ala commanded it to pass through so if a person is ill he can be next to another person and that other person may that third person may not be affected by it or that second person may not be affected by it and he may be affected by it in any case Allah jalla wa ala is the one that caused for the disease to pass over to the other person like this doesn't mean that we don't take the means we take the means to stay away from a person who is ill however if we are afflicted with the same disease or illness then we cannot say it is because of that rather it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the prophet sallallahu said wala tayyara wala tayyara ay la athara laha aw la athara lima yutayyaru bihi fi jalb al-khayr wa daf' al-dar ay there is no effect or no trace in that which a person seeks bad omen in in bringing good or repelling harm in bringing good or repelling harm so for example that person that مثلا opens a, an umbrella in the house believing that that will bring him bad luck that is what tatayyuk that is seeking bad omens in something lakin in reality does it have any say what happens opening an umbrella what, what about it walking under a ladder what about it breaking a mirror what about it you can break a mirror any minute it doesn't mean it has a, a reason for it there is no reason behind it it just means you're clumsy طيب <clears throat> then the prophet sallallahu alaihi said wala hamma and hamma and aw so they used to also seek bad omens in jahiliya in owls which is a type of bird they used to seek bad omens so if they would hear the noise or the sound of an owl they would say something bad will happen or we need to do this or we need to protect ourselves sometimes they would have certain beliefs that if a person is killed unjustly then the owl or the bird would go to the house of the deceased the one that was killed and it will not be quiet until revenge is taken so all of these are beliefs of jahiliya that we need to stay away from wala safara and there is no safar meaning there is no meaning the month of you know, the month of allah jalla safar the month of safar it is not a means for bad omen it is not we shouldn't be superstitious with regards to the month of safar a lot of people in the month of safar they wouldn't go on a safar they wouldn't go on a journey they would avoid going on a journey avoid getting married avoid doing many things in that month because they would say it is a bad luck just like some people say the same thing for every wednesday or the last wednesday of a month the last wednesday of a month so for example they say we can't do anything on that day because it is a day of it is a day of bad luck and these things they don't have any effect on anything you know so what if it's a wednesday wednesday's come around all the time it doesn't mean that it causes harm akhrajahu wa fi muslim wala naw'a wala ghawla wala naw'a meaning there's no effect on astrology مثلا a star being born or star ending and so on has no effect in what happens it has no effect on what happens it is rather allah jalla wa ala that controls everything that takes place in this dunya also the last point wala ghawla ghawl is a type of jinn is a type of jinn and they say that it it comes into the path of whenever you're traveling مثلا it will come in your way or come in your path and it will cause you to be misguided or afar or cause you to uh, lose your way or go to go in the wrong direction and so on so it is a type of jinn lakin in order to avoid that the person says a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem and he seeks refuge in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he doesn't believe that just because he's seen that or seen these things that they will cause him harm they will cause him harm <coughs> and that is the second hadith or the first hadith wala huma an anas then the hadith of anas radiyallahu anhu the next one la adwa wala tayyara has the same meaning as the previous one lakin what is the difference here wa yu'jibuni al fa'lu lakin the fa'lu it is i am pleased with it it's amazing to me qalu wa ma al fa'lu ya rasulullah what is fa'l ya rasulullah he said qala al kalimatu al tayyiba al kalimatu الطيبة. It is the good word. 
So the kalima tayyiba is that word in which a Muslim, a muwahid, he hears or he comes across and he thinks, mashallah, yeah, huh? yeah, to be optimistic, mashallah. If, مثلاً, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sulhul hudaybiyya, different members of Quraysh kept on coming and the agreement would not be settled and so on. Then who came? A companion, uh, an individual called Sahal, or Suhail. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sahal Allahu amrakum then your amr will be sahal and easy. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was optimistic that things were going to go right. طيب. Mathalan, for example, a person has a dream that a, a friend of his became a alim. And then he tells his friend, and then the friend's a bit happy, overwhelmed. He's happy. <laughs> yeah, and that is fa'l, al-kalima tayyiba, things that are good that a person hears that are pleasing to him. Lakin, it doesn't cause him to do anything. It just pleases him. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Yu'jibunu, yu'jibni al-fa'l." Taib. And there's a difference between al-fa'l and al-tatayyub. Al-fa'l is husnu zan billah. Is husnu zan billah. It is having good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa taala. What tiyagatu? It is having su'u zan billah. It is having Bad thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The second difference is Al-fa'lu having, Hearing the good word Al-kalimatu tayyib As the Prophet said It has no effect on whether the person Does something or refrains from something Does something or refrains from something It just puts happiness into your heart Lakin at it has an effect on al-iqdam wal ihjam Whether you go forward and go do, the, do this act Or whether you refrain from it For example, when they hear an owl In the middle of the night, they see that it is a bad omen So the next day they wouldn't travel Or they wouldn't do what they wanted to initially do Because they say, I heard a sign last night I saw a sign or I heard a sign last night Or today's Friday the 13th and it's October and Halloween to add on top of that. Therefore, we're going to stay indoors so we don't see any shayateen outside. That is haram to have. That sort of ideology and belief is haram to have. That's why in some buildings, they actually skip the number 13. Some buildings, say 11, 12, 14, <laughs> leaving out 13. Tayyip. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, or the Sheikh said, "Rahimahullah taala, rahmatun wasiya." In the next hadith, he says, "An amr nam dukir tayyib anta Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Tayyib was mentioned with, near the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he said, "Ahsanuha al-fa'l." Tayyib or being superstitious or optimistic was mentioned, and he said, "The best of it is al-fa'l." Wala tarudda, wala tarudda, wala taruddu Musliman. Fa ida ra'a ahadukum ma yakhaf, fa liyakul Allahumma. لا يأتي بالحسنات إلا أنت ولا يدفع السيئات إلا أنت ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. So in this last hadith or this next hadith, the Prophet was asked about الطيرة or having omens or good omens or bad omens, and he said the best of it is الفعل, الفعل. And they asked him what that is, and he said, or oh, oh, he mentioned فعل. لكن he said that if a Muslim sees something that he dislikes, then it doesn't hold him back. Rather he says what? He says this du'a. Rather he says. This dua and this hadith is da'if. So the third hadith is da'if, like in the meaning of it is found in the hadith before it. And for all of the du'as, they're mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah anyway. Then Ibn Mas'ud said, radiallahu anhu marfu'an, atiyaratu shirkun, atiyaratu shirkun, atiyaratu shirkun. Ibn Mas'ud said, marfu'an, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet said, atiyara, Bad omens, seeking bad omens, seeking bad omens, is shirk, shirk, shirk. And he said it three times, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And where's the mahalu shahid? The fact that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called at-tiyaga, bad omens, he called it what? Shirk. As for the last part, wa ma minna illa, yani, illa anahu yatatayyag, wa lakinna Allah yudhibuhu bitawakkul, that is from the words of Ibn Mas'ud, radiyallahu anhu. Wa ma minna, put it in brackets, wa ma minna, إلا ولكن الله يذهبه بالتوكل. That is from the words of Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله عنه.
And it is called what in Ilm al Hadith? Mudraj. Ahsantum. Tayyib. Tayyib. Wali Ahmed min Hadith, naam. Wali Ahmed min Hadith ibn Amr radiallahu anhu. He said, Man raddat hu tiratu an hajati faqad ashraka. Faqalu ma kafara to dalaka kal and to kula allahu mala khaira illa khairuka wala tayra illa tayruka wala ilaha khairuka. This last hadith, or the second to last hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whomsoever his bad omen or bad suspicion holds him back from his need, whatever he wanted to do, فَقَدْ أَشْرَكَ Verily he has fallen into shirk. Verily he has fallen into shirk. What type of shirk? Major or minor? Minor shirk in its asal. قَالُوا مَا كَفَارَةُ ذَلِكَ What is the expiation for that? He said that, that you say, Allahumma la khair, oh there is no goodness, illa khairuk, except for your good. وَلَا طَيْرَ إِلَّا طَيْرُكَ And there's no omen or nothing that can control it except you or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَا إِلَهُ غَيْرُكَ And there's none that to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So the maqsood of the hadith is the tabid That's why the shaykh mentioned it The reason why the shaykh rahimahullah mentioned this hadith is because of the tabid or the criterion that is mentioned in this hadith That is mentioned in this hadith طيب and the last narration is وَلَهُ مِنْ حَدِيثِ فَضْلِ مِنْ عَبَّاسِ إِنَّمَا الطَّيِّرَةُ إِنَّمَا الطَّيِّرَةُ مَا أَمْضَاكَ أَوْ غَدَّكَ الطَّيِّرَةُ الطَّيِّرَةُ or bad omens or having suspicion being superstitious is with regards to that which makes you carry on in doing what you was going to do or that which prevents you from doing what you was going to do so that last hadith is ضعيف like in the meaning is sahih and it is found in the ahadith that are before it. It is found in the ahadith <coughs> that are before it. Fihim Asail. Important points. Number one, explaining the saying of Allah, rather the evil beliefs based on their omens are about Allah, but most of them do not know with your omens are for you. Naam, the two verses and the mahalu shahid is what? And the fact that they had bad omens in Musa alayhi salam and Allah Jalla wa'ala refuted them for that and said that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is not from Musa rather Musa was a source of khayr and barakat number two the negation of adwa adwa an illness going to an, affecting another on its own without any effect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number three the negation of tiyarah no, bad omens negating it uh, number four the negation of al no. Number four, the negation of suffer. Number five, that al-fa'l is not included, rather it is recommended. Fa'l is not included as what? Well. At-tira. It is not being, having bad omens or anything like that. Rather it is, it is something that is mustahab. <coughs> Number seven, the explanation of al-fa'l. Number eight, any hesitation that occurs in the hearts due to omens will not actually cause harm rather Allah would remove it if tawakkul is present Naam. so tiyara having bad omens and seeking being superstitious it negates what or it harms one's tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it harms one's tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aslan it, ha- it, comp- it negates the completeness of one's tawakkul meaning he has fallen into shirk al by believing that these Small things or these petty things are a means for changing the qadr of Allah or th- for things to happen and occur. Number nine, and mentioning what should be said by one in such cases. Naam, the dua that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, we said, obviously the ulama, they say is da'if, lacking. there are other duas that a person can read. Number ten, the clarification that tiyarah is shirk. Naam, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Sa'ud, where the Prophet said, a tiyarah shirkun, he said it, Three times, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah ta'ala a'lam wa ahkamu billahi tawfiq. What is it? Uh, the, the explanation of the blameworthy tira. Naam, the blameworthy tira, meaning that which tells you to do something or causes you to do something or causes you to, to refrain and to stay away from something.